Now we're going to demonstrate the uh, audio features of Band in a Box. We're going to record a guitar part live uh, along to a Band in a Box song. We've loaded in Git Test, which is our demo song for this tutorial. As you'll recall, it's a, it's a, a song that has a, a nice little melody on it that was played on a guitar, and, and we're going to see if I can learn that and play along with it in real time. So what I'll do is mute the melody using the right mouse button there, and now I've got the advantage of being able to look at the notation here, and I'll see if I can sight read it, and, and, but of course we'll want to record it. So we're going to press the microphone button here, we're going to record from the start of the song instead of the middle. We're not doing any overdub here. We're not recording MIDI. But we would definitely like to set our recording properties. And after that's set, we're going to want to test it on a VU meter before we even want to record. This is sort of the testing one, two, three part of, uh, part of the recording to make sure that uh, we've got the level set properly. So we press the set recording properties uh, dialog. And that brings up the recording control. This is the recording control from a Sound Blaster Live, which shows a lot of uh, panels, probably uh, almost double the, what you'd see on a regular sound card, because there's a lot you can record. We're plugged into the line in so that we have that selected. Everything else is not selected purposefully. We don't want to record our audio CD player in case it was playing a CD at the time. We don't want to record the microphone because we don't have a singer. We don't have anything plugged in here. We don't go have an outgoing wave that we want to record, and we don't want to re definitely don't want to record the outgoing MIDI uh, because that would bleed onto the track. Similarly, we don't have any of these type of inputs, so we can just close that. We're happy that we've selected line in properly. Now we can test the recording level. This will open up the panel that shows the VU meter, and it'll also open up the recording drivers, which sort of allow the sound card to be receiving the sound and VU meters will show up. Most sound cards show their VU meters for recording on the record panel, but we're using a Sound Blaster Live and they've chosen the playback panel to show them. So you need to make sure it's set to the one that your sound card uses. We press the recording me uh, levels and now the, um, uh, the dialog shows us that the play control is open because that's where the Sound Blaster Live has its VU meters and we want to make sure that as we play information on our guitar we've got a level and we'll play a loud chord and it doesn't go into the yellow or the red and that's sounding uh, good and that, those levels look pretty good so we we can probably just uh, close this now close the driver and be satisfied that we've got some pretty good recording levels happening and now we just are left to press record and then Music will start and I'll sight read along to it for a few bars and then we'll hear what it sounds like. We'll just press stop and we've recorded a 3.4 meg wave file. We've only recorded the guitar part of it because we don't want to record the MIDI as well at this stage and now we're ready to listen to it on playback. So we can just press play now and we'll hear the playback with the guitar channel in as well. So we've got a pretty nice level which we can control. So, uh, and uh, now we've uh, been able to record this file, and you can tell that there's a 3.4 meg wave file there. That wave file, if you're technically minded, that wave file is just a regular old wave file called git test.wave, and it'll always reside right beside the other file here, and it's a 38 second wave file. Now we can, um, want, uh, if we wanted to process this wave in, in a certain manner, we can reduce the uh, level uh, of the wave file. Um, we can uh, adjust the level of the wave, wave file quickly, essentially using this particular device. We can time shift the audio if it was out of sync. 
which doesn't seem to be out of sync at all and we can insert beats or delete beats and uh, uh, we can export the audio to the sequencer. Uh, what that is is mainly just an information box for you to tell you that it's basically exported already. It's there as a WAV file and then uh, so all you need to do is in your in your sequencer you would make a MIDI file of this thing and then uh, open the MIDI file and then open the WAV file and if you're using PowerTrax version 6 it'll do that automatically for you if it finds a band in a box WAV file MIDI file it will automatically load in this WAV file but other sequencers like uh, Cakewalk and uh, Audio Program should have no trouble reading in uh, uh, a WAV file uh, you know, to add to your performance there's also plugins that you can use uh, if we wanted to add reverb, chorus, flanger, and th that'll be covered in later topics.